Hello and welcome to CJC 132 and welcome to the fall semester. This is core procedures and I know we discussed a lot about expectations and whatnot in the welcome video so I'm not going to rehash that. This is mostly going to be content. This is your, your weekly uh, lecture, the first in your weekly lecture series. Uh, before I get too much in the content, I just want to make sure that you have the correct textbook. So I'm going to grab the correct textbook should look like this, either the E version, Rebel version, or the, uh, the hard version, the, the software. So make sure you have the correct version. It looks a lot like that. And let's get started. Let's get to, into a little bit of content this week for chapter one. Uh, we, as we talk about courts, we need to figure out what do courts do and and why do we have courts and where who says that courts can tell us what to do. Like that that's to me that would be the, the the first question that comes to mind. If if courts are sitting here uh, sentencing people to lengthy jail time, fines, taking people's money, taking people's liberties and freedoms, who says they could do that? Well, it's spelled out. It's spelled out in the Constitution, and it's spelled out in laws that have been written. So courts aren't doing it willy-nilly. They're not just going uh, without authority. Authority is given to them by the, by the people via the legislature and by the people via the Constitution of the United States of America. So generally, we find courts in the judicial branch, uh, as opposed to some of the other branches that we have. Uh, if you remember from your from your other classes, we have the executive branch, which is the president uh, or or the leader of a municipality, mayor, a governor. Those are those are the uh, the local and state levels of uh, the executive branches. We also have the legislative branch, which would be our House of Representatives and Senate. It's our Congress on the federal level. In the uh, on the state level, it could be also uh, assemblies or senates, some sort of state state Congress, and then locally it could be even uh, just boards. Uh, city city government has their own types of legislative branches that can make local uh, municipal laws. So those are the, the three types of uh, branches, the three branches we have in the government. So the courts are empowered to make these binding decisions, these adjudications. That's why we have them. They're either uh, making case laws, uh, they are uh, finding, finding truth, in some cases, when it comes to uh, trials, you can have a, a, a court trial, a, a judicial trial instead of a jury trial, but it's still gonna be in the judicial branch. But uh, they can be uh, empowered to do, do those as well. So there, each level of, of government has its own court system. So we've got the federal level and the state level. So states, they have limited jurisdiction when it comes to courts. They have uh, the, the actual, when somebody go, gets arrested, you're gonna to go to a state court. Those courts can have a, a state court of appeals. Maybe even a, a, a state Supreme Court. But after that, it's gonna to go to the federal level. The federal level is going to have the federal appellate courts. It's going to have uh, up to the, the federal Supreme Court. Now, it doesn't mean that every case that's going to be uh, that's heard at one level and they want to appeal to the next level, it doesn't have to be heard at the next level, especially at the, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, as we're going to discuss later on in this uh, in this class, the Supreme Court has discretion as to whether or not they can hear a case or not, or will hear a case or not. And we're going to discuss how that process takes place and how that decision is made and, and handed down. But the courts, courts are fact finders. They, they handle the law, if you will. But we need to remember there's two kinds of law. There's civil law and there's criminal law. What's the difference? Criminal law is, is what we were just talking about. Criminal, when, when you're arrested, you broke the law. There, you have a chance to be uh, to have some sort of punitive uh, sentence handed down, uh, whether it be incarceration, fines, uh, up to the death penalty. Civil, if you break civil law, or if, you, if you're involved in a civil law situation, you're not going to get the death penalty. You can't, because civil law doesn't deal with death penalty or incarcerations like that. Civil laws are lawsuits. When somebody is wronged and they need to be made whole, need to be made right, then civil law is the, uh, the answer to that. We also need to remember that uh, when it does come to criminal law, the court, when the courts are handling criminal laws, there's three, three levels of violations of law. Felonies, misdemeanors, and infractions. 
infractions are the lowest level. Infractions are like speeding, uh, running a stop sign, um, you know, racing. Just any anytime you, you might get a ticket, running a stoplight, weaving, not using your turn signal, all those things. Those are all infractions. Those all come generally with just the fine. You can't go to, you're not going to get death penalty for an infraction, right? But next up, we have misdemeanors. You can get a fine for a misdemeanor also, just like an infraction, but you also can get a, you know, a, a short incarceration. And you bump that up to felonies, you can still get a fine, you can still get a short incarceration, but you can also get a lengthy incarceration up to the death penalty. So that's how our, our three uh, categories of, of criminal law violations exist. Let's talk about, uh, since we, we, we touched on the judicial and legislative branch, let's talk about how these, uh, these decisions that are made by the judicial branch are handed down. We know that the legislative branch is the one who makes the laws. However, there's an exception to that. Laws can be made, case law can be made by courts. There's a Latin term called stare decisis. It means to stand by things decided. That's, that's case law. That's when some, a judge makes a decision and that decision is binding for every judge thereafter. The Supreme Court does it all the time. If something isn't spelled out in the law, when the Supreme Court makes a decision, then every court below them has to follow that decision. A great example that I talked about in another class is the Miranda decision, Miranda versus Arizona. Miranda v. Arizona was a case where a, an arrestee appealed his case after he was convicted and said, I never knew I didn't have to talk. Nobody ever read me anything. Nobody ever told me that I could have an attorney. Nobody ever told me that I didn't have to uh, provide a statement. I didn't know I had these rights. How would I know? And that case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, you know what? Yeah, that's true. We should be telling arrestees that they have these rights. Otherwise, how else are they going to know? And so that's how Miranda rights and reading some of their rights came to be. It was a case law, and now it's law. Now every court follows that, that same decision, and even uh, the, the law enforcement branch has to follow that decision. Otherwise, they'll be in violation of that case law. So the judicial branch has what we like to call an adversarial system. Adversarial is, you know, the uh, fight. Combating, competing, that's, that's what adversarial means. So how does that come to play in our court system? Somebody's arrested, they go to a jury trial, they go to, they, they go to court, and you've got the prosecutor who is pounding away with evidence, but you also have a defense attorney or you know, the, the, um, an offender can represent himself. But in general, there is some sort of attorney in court uh, representing the offender. And they're giving their side of the story. They're giving the offender side of the story. Every time the, the prosecutor has something to say, there's a counterpoint by the defense. That's why those two are competing. It's adversarial because both sides present evidence. That's how due process occurs. It, it wouldn't be much due process if only one side told the story. The exception to that is that it's uh, in grand juries. Grand juries, only one side tells the story because the, per, the offender isn't aware that that hearing is taking place. Grand juries are usually in, uh, in private and only the prosecutor tells the side of, their side of the story and the grand jury decides, okay, should this person go to, to trial? Now, nobody can be found guilty at a grand jury because that wouldn't be due process, but what they can do is say, yes, that person should go to trial and then they can go arrest the, uh, the offender and then opt for a trial where both sides tell their, side, their story and we have the adversarial system where due process is allowed and necessitated by law. So the opposite of the adversarial system is the inquisitorial system. We don't have that in the United States. The inquisitorial system is in other countries where you can either be forced to testify against yourself, question where the whole trial is, get up on the stand and let's ask you a bunch of questions and we're gonna prove that you did it. And if you don't answer the questions right, bad things might happen. That's inquisitorial system. I think, my opinion, I think we have a much, much better, much more fair system. I'm a big uh, proponent of due process, obviously. And I think that if we went to the uh, to another system, it wouldn't nearly be as beneficial for society 
uh, as a whole, because due process uh, fairness brings a much more uh, content society. That's all I have for this week's lecture. Make sure you look at week one for the uh, the assignments, the discussion board, the rebel. Uh, make sure you just turn in your initial post by Wednesday and your two replies by Sunday and that your initial post has 300 words and your replies have 150 words each at least. And that your initial post has at least two references. Uh, I look forward to reading all of your submissions this week. And also don't forget your, uh, your rebel. Uh, all your rebel assignments need to be completed uh, by the end of the week. If you have any questions, please use the, the contact information in Blackboard to get a hold of me. Check my office hours if you want to stop in, and we can always chat in person. Until then, I look forward to reading your submissions, and we will talk soon.